Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. I want to start out something um, this morning. Uh, a special shout out to a good friend of mine, uh, Pastor Steve Evans. Uh, Pastor Steve uh, was here. I moved here from Oklahoma. Moved from Oklahoma to Texas back when I was in junior high. I'm 51 now, and so junior high was a long time ago. Anyway, a, a kid in the neighborhood invited me to church, and Steve Evans was the youth director there. Well, Steve, uh, Steve was a very good influence on my life early on. Um, you know, planted some really good seeds there. And uh, anyway, I, I saw a video yesterday. Steve and his wife, Patty, and a uh, bunch of their family, they live over in Virginia now. And uh, I saw a video online that Pastor Steve is retiring now. Or he's a pastor now, but he, he was a youth director then. But he's, he is retiring, and uh, I think this Sunday he's going to be uh, preaching. But uh, the video talked about... You know about his history and uh, you know where his ministry has led him and uh, so anyway I just wanted to say hello to Steve and uh, Steve congratulations on your on on a just everything you, you guys were you and Patty were a really good influence on my life uh, growing up and uh, I'm, I'm proud to call you guys friend so uh, anyway so this is uh, this is what I do. I do coffee in the Word every morning. So, um, anyway, just wanted to say that. And uh, uh, so, let's get started. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you're all doing well this morning. Uh, the first readings this morning, we're going to start off in Psalms, as always, and then we're going to Leviticus, and then we have a reading in Second Corinthians. So, let me get a little bit of coffee here and. Uh, and we'll get started. And as always, may God bless the reading of his word. So we're going to start off this morning with Psalm 88. Here we go. O Lord, God of my salvation, I cry out day and night before you. Let my prayer come before you. Incline, my, incline your ear to my cry. For my soul is full of troubles, and my life draws near to Sheol. I am counted among those who go down to the pit. I am a man who has no strength, like one set loose among the dead, like the slain that lie in the grave, like those whom you remember no more, for they are cut off from your hand. You have put me in the depths of the pit, in the regions dark and deep. Your wrath lies heavy upon me, and you overwhelm me with all your waves. Selah. You have caused my companions to shun me. You have made me a horror to them. I am shut in so that I cannot escape. My eye grows dim through sorrow. Every day I call upon you, O Lord. I spread out my hands to you. Do you work wonders for the dead? Do, you, do the departed rise up to praise you? Selah. Is your steadfast love declared in the grave, or your faithfulness in Abaddon? Are your wonders known in the darkness, or your righteousness in the land of the forgetfulness? But I, O Lord, cry to you. In the morning my prayer comes before you. O Lord, why do you cast my soul away? Why do you hide your face from me? Afflicted and close to death from my youth up, I suffer your terrors. I am helpless. Your wrath has swept over me. Your dreadful assaults destroy me. They surrounded me like a flood all day long. They close in on me together. You have caused my beloved and my friend to shun me. My companions have become darkness. Wow. All right. Next, uh, the Old Testament le lesson. We're going to Leviticus uh, chapter 15, verses 19 through 31. All right. Leviticus going into the law. So here we go. When a woman has a discharge, and the discharge in her body is blood... She shall be in her menstrual impurity for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. And everything on which she lies during her menstrual impurity shall be unclean. Everything also on which she sits shall be unclean. And whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. 
And whoever touches anything on which she sits shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in the water and be unclean until the evening. Whether it is the bed or anything on which she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her and her menstrual impurity comes upon him, he shall be unclean seven days, and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, not at the, the time of her menstrual impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond the time of her impurity, all the days of the discharge shall she shall continue in uncleanness. As in the days of her impurity, she shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge, shall be to her as the bed of her impurity, and everything on which she sits shall be unclean as in the uncleanness of her menstrual impurity. And whoever touches these things shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in, the, in water, and be unclean until the evening. But if she is cleansed of her discharge, she shall count for herself seven days, and after that she but shall be clean. And on the eighth day she shall take two turtle doves and two pigeons, and bring them to the priest, to the entrance of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall use one for a sin offering, and the other for a burnt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for her before the Lord for her unclean discharge. Thus you shall keep the people of Israel separate from their uncleanness, lest they die in their uncleanness by defiling my tabernacle that is in their midst. Wow. All right, the New Testament lesson this morning is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints, for I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Acadia, Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. But I am sending the brothers so that our boasting about you may prove, may not prove empty in this matter, so that you may be ready, as I said you, as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you are not ready, we will be humiliated to say nothing of you, for being so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go ahead of you and arrange in advance for the gift you have promised so that it may be ready as a willing gift, not an exact exaction. And this is the word of the Lord. And uh, let's go to the Pray Now app, and we'll read the prayer of the day. All right, let us pray. Merciful and eternal God, your holy apostles Peter and Paul received grace and strength to lay down their lives for the sake of your Son. Strengthen us by your Holy Spirit that we may confess your truth and at all times be ready to lay down our lives for him who laid down his life for us. Even Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And once again, there is an interesting paragraph here about St. Peter and St. Paul, and we, as we know, the uh, uh, apostles. So... I'd like to share that with you. The festival of St. Peter and St. Paul is probably the oldest of the saints' observances, dating from about the middle of the third century. An early tradition held that these two pillars of the New Testament church were martyred on the same day in Rome during the persecution under Nero. In addition to this joint commemoration of their deaths, both apostles are commemorated separately. Peter, on January 18th for his confession of Jesus as the Christ, and Paul, on January 25th, for his conversion. The New Testament tells us much about both apostles. Peter was with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry and served as a leader among the disciples. Despite his steadfast faith, Scripture also records some of his failures, such as his rebuke of Jesus and his threefold denial of the Lord. Following Jesus' ascension, Peter continued as a leader of the church. Paul, a devout Jew, 
also known as Saul, entered the scene as a persecutor of the church, following his miraculous conversion in which the risen Christ himself appeared to him. Paul became a powerful preacher of the grace of God. During his three missionary journeys, Paul traveled throughout modern-day Turkey and Greece. The New Testament account of his life ends with Paul under house arrest in Rome. Through tradition, uh, though tradition holds that he went on to Spain before returning to Rome. All right. You know a little interesting thing about Paul. Um, my family came over from the Catian Alps in Italy, that's which is right where Italy and France come together. And uh, my family, they were, they were Waldensians. Um, and they were persecuted over there and blah, 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 blah. But uh, the town where I'm from, Valdez, North Carolina, has a Trail of Faith uh, website. It has a timeline. And it goes all the way back. Uh, it tells you know, when the ships came over, when they planted the church, and uh, the, the Waldensians, when they came here, they merged with the Presbyterian Church. The theology was very, very close. And, um, but anyway, the, the timeline goes all the way back to 90 A.D. So this was my people way back to 90 A.D. And it said one of the apostles of Christ came through the valley and, and planted the seeds of Christianity. And, uh, so, and they think it was the Apostle Paul being taken to Rome because he would have passed right through that, that, that little area. And uh, I, what does that get me? <laughs> Nothing. Just a cool story. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. And so with that, y'all have an awesome day. So be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we will see you tomorrow morning on Coffee in the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.